Hey, good evening. It's uh, Saturday, August 8th, 8, 8, 8 if you're using digital numbers. I want to talk tonight about church. Tomorrow, in some form, we're going to be encountering church. It's going to be different. Maybe you're doing online. Maybe you are viewing the church after this over and the service is being uh, recorded and you're viewing it that way. Maybe you're going to church. It's a little bit different than what you're normally used to. But the point is, we're still doing church. And this idea of doing church is what God uses to transform the world. The church in the first century, they did church in such a way that they changed the entire Roman Empire. They didn't vote, they didn't use violence, but something about their interaction as church, as when they got away from church, it carried with them to the point where people took notice. And they saw that these Christian people were different people. And it was because they did church and then they took that church out and it impacted the world. What does our church experience do to the world? Are we blown away by the opportunity to hear God's word, to sing his praises, and to work together with other believers for the purpose of bringing in the kingdom of God, of ushering it in, of taking the kingdom of God that is within my heart, as Jesus says it is in Revelation, and making that into other folks. Why is it that we are not having the kind of impact that that first century church had and and other times in history? Because right now we look around us and we'd have to say the world is winning. We're not impacting the world. The world is impacting us. We're not going to do this by standing and making charges and, and... being offensive and standing up for our rights. We're going to do this by loving each other. Jesus said, by this will all men know you are to my disciples if you have loved one for another. And then we show what the beautiful difference it is it means to be redeemed and born again, which is what 1 Peter talks about, particularly at the end of chapter 2, but also into chapter 3. It might be a little bit of an insight for us here in John's first epistle. Now I'm going to read from a different, little, maybe a different translation for some of you when you see New Living, just to give a kind of a contrast for you. Verses 15 to 17 in 1 John 2 make an interesting contrast for us, but in comparison to Eve, I read John Murray's commentary on this years and years ago, and I've been struck by it, that the three things that are mentioned here in these verses are exactly the things that Satan tempted Eve with way back in the garden. So John says emphatically, do not love the world nor the things it offers you. Do not love the world or the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only, notice the emphasis only, I like what they do with this translation. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and a pride in our possessions and achievements. Eve was tempted by pleasant the eye, good for food. She thought it made it wise. Same roots here, which is what Murray points out. And then John goes on in his letter here, These are not from the Father, but they are from the world. A craving for physical stuff, a craving for everything we see that excites us, and pride and just conceit, and overconsumption, and overcompassion, and overcompensation for our achievements and possessions. Those things aren't from the world. And then John says, and this world is fading away along with all those things that people crave. 
Francis Schaeffer referred to it as living lives that are going to, for things that are going to wind up in the ash heap, in the landfill. We invest in landfill things rather than in eternity. So, and this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God and the will of God invests it forever. When you do church tomorrow, have the courage to ask God to change you. And then realize you are doing an encounter, not something that's of a mundane thing, but you are meeting with the people of God to hear the Word of God, to live the Word of God. And if we're going to impact our world, and our world needs impacting, we can't love it. We can't give ourselves to it. If we want to have vitality as a church, we must give ourselves to Christ and His Word. And that's the word this night, church. Tomorrow, let's engage in church and do church so that it makes us a people that are distinctive on this planet. You rest well. Good night.